Hello everybody, and in this video, I will be going through my personal strategy guide for the Oryx fight in the King's Fall raid. Now, this is not meant to be a video that's supposed to be like, hey guys, this is the best strategy ever, and you should totally do it because we're the best players in the world. It's just to give you a basic understanding of all the mechanics that happen in the Oryx fight, so you go in well-informed and know what you're supposed to be doing, and then it's just going to show you how we personally do the raid with the group of people that I personally play with. Of course, it's not the best way. There's multiple different ways that people do it, but understanding the mechanics and seeing how we do it, having an explanation of how we do it, might help get you guys to defeating Oryx a little bit faster than if there was no explanation from me at all. So to kick things off, let's talk about the roles that need to be filled by your team during the Oryx fight. The first role are the platformers. These are people that have their very own platform and they are in control of said platform. When you go into the Oryx room fight, this is also where the Death Singers happen, but we're talking about Oryx here. When you go into that room, you're going to see four platforms. There's going to be two when you immediately walk in, and then there's going to be two a little bit further down. There needs to be four people fulfilling this role to take control of each platform, and that's going to be the one that they're going to activate. That is their role, is just to activate the platform and to kill the ogre that spawns by their platform, which of course we will get into later. The next role is that of the runner. This person's job is to jump on the platforms that are spawned by your platformers standing on their individual podium. This person is then going to jump along all of these platforms, grab the orb. Once they have the orb, they're going to go to the vessel, which is a knight with a yellow health bar, and they're going to slam it down on him, stealing his aura of immunity. This not only enables you to actually do damage to the vessel, which is incredibly important because he goes around eating bombs, which we'll talk about later. You don't want him eating bombs. It's bad. But you also get to steal that aura, which makes everyone inside of it completely immune to any damage. And that's very important because there's a lot of ads and you will totally die if you do not have it. And the last role is that of the DPS. This person does not have their own platform. This person's not grabbing any orbs. This person's job is to help do damage to things that need help doing damage to, such as someone's ogre. If someone's struggling with an ogre, they can travel between the two sides and help out with that. They're also responsible for taking out the ads that spawn in the middle center of the entire room. That's their job help with doing damage to make sure everything goes smoothly. Now on to the actual Oryx encounter itself. We're going to be mostly talking about the platformer's job because that's the role that most people are going to be doing. And then we'll talk about the other roles later on in the video. So when the encounter first starts, you're going to run right to the front of the room. So you enter and you run all the way down and ads are going to start spawning to your left and to your right. You want to deal with those as quickly as possible and pay attention to two knights that will be spawning on the platforms to your left and right. Make sure you take them out as quickly as possible because if you leave those guys up, all kind of havoc is going to happen and it's not going to be a good time. So focus fire the two knights down. After you take those two knights down, it is your job to head to your platform of choice. Whichever one that you have been given, that's the platform that you go to. Oryx will then go to one of the platforms at the very front of the room. He's going to pick one. It can be totally random which one it's going to pick, but it's going to be one of the two at the front. He's not going to be going to the back just yet. This is where the runner will start their run. So what's going to happen is Oryx is going to slam his fist onto the platform. The runner will jump on first. This is very important because whoever jumps on first is the one that gets torn between dimensions and that person needs to jump and go and get that orb to take the vessel's aura of immunity. So the runner will jump on first, followed by that platform's owner, and then everyone else will jump on their platform in a counterclockwise direction. So callouts are really important for this part, just so everyone knows when to jump up. You can say your name, like Watts on is usually what we were doing, just so the other people in the team knew when it was their time to jump on, because this needs to be done in the correct sequence, going in a counterclockwise direction. Now it is definitely worth noting that the last platform, the very last one, the fourth person that has to jump on their platform, 
they don't need to jump on it. They can go between helping with the ogres just like the DPS role. They can go between because it's not important for them to have to stand on their platform and it's much better to have that person helping out with taking down ogres and ads and all that stuff rather than just sitting on their platform when they don't need to be there. Now that you have your team members jumping on their platforms, this will cause light eating ogres to spawn right next to that platform. It is very important to take these out as soon as possible because when you do kill them, they drop a bomb. What this bomb does and what it's used for is doing damage to Oryx, but it has to be detonated at the same time as all the other bombs. So if someone detonates their bomb by accident, by walking into it, they are going to kill their entire team and that is obviously not a good thing. So help each other out with ogres. This is why you have the DPS and the fourth platformer running between the ogres and helping to take them out as soon as possible. So they can be very, very far from where you're fighting everything and no one accidentally will step into it. Once the ogres are down, this will be around the same time as the runner having grabbed the orb and slammed it into the vessel. What you guys have to do now is run to the middle and kill that yellow knight. Kill him as quick as possible. Just kill him, get it over with, get him done. Because what he is trying to do is go to all of the bombs and eat them so you can't do damage to Oryx. That's what he's trying to do and you need to stop him doing that. Tethering him with a Night Stalker Shadow Shot is really good for this because then we can just keep him in place. He doesn't end up wandering around eating bombs. We don't want that. So take him down as soon as possible and after that this is when you're going to be doing damage to Oryx. So what my team does for the damage phase to Oryx is we jump on the platform that is closest to Oryx so we can get as close to him as possible. This is just to mitigate any damage drop off. Now this is not necessary, you can just shoot him from the middle. The reason why we did this is because if you are doing your first ever run through of the raid and you don't have super powerful weapons, you just need to make sure you have as much damage as possible. So making sure that you reduce any damage reduction is really, really good. So it's not necessary, but if it is your first time, it might help you guys do damage to him. And it is incredibly important that you do do damage to him because you need to get him to fall down. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get him to flinch. You're trying to get him to fall down because if you don't, he will clap his hands and kill your entire team, which is obviously something that you don't want to happen. Now, after he does fall down, my team made sure to all meet back in the middle again. The reason that we we do this is because this is when we all split to go and detonate our bombs. Now the only people that are going to be splitting is the people that have a platform that belongs to them. The other people, the runner and the DPS, are going to remain in the middle and they're going to remain shooting Oryx. It's important that they keep constant, consistent damage on Oryx while the bombs are being detonated. Now like I said before, bombs do need to be detonated at the same time. The way that my team ensures this happens is by all going to the middle and then splitting off to the bombs. What you can do as well is go close to your bomb and do a three, two, one countdown. But we just found that this was a really simple way without adding any more countdowns, any more communication by just meeting in the middle and then splitting off to our bombs. Once the four platformers have reached their bomb, you wanna make sure that you stand in it until it says your name has corrupted light or whatever it says. It says something like that, but it will say your name. That's very important because this makes sure that you have detonated your bomb. Don't leave until you see your name. Once you see your name, head back to the middle into the aura of immunity with your DPS and runner, and you are going to start shooting Oryx again. Do as much damage as you possibly can to him. Shoot all your stuff into him. Your touch of malice is really good and your raid weapons, of course. But don't bother reloading. Just switch to all of your weapons and just keep doing damage to him. Now, these bombs are the things that do damage to Oryx. You're going to need a total of 16 bombs, which if you do it cleanly and you make sure that you get four bombs each run through of this pattern that we're doing, it should only take you four of these 
these to take down orcs. He will become enraged at six, so as long as you do it before you reach six, then that's totally fine. After the first whole damage phase to orcs, he will then start shooting down missiles onto your entire team. This is what we call circles. We just scream circles, 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 circles. You run in circles. Each person that has a platform can go to their platform. So that's four people that have a designated area to run and they can just run in a circle around their platform. Just keep on running in a circle. Don't try and be fancy and dodge it when you see it coming at you. Just keep running in a circle. As long as you're constantly moving, you shouldn't die to it. There will be knights that spawn on the platforms that will shoot you. But if you are a platformer and you have your own platform, running in a circle will also stop you getting shot by those knights. Now, if you are the runner or the DPS and they don't have their own platform, you can just run up and down the middle. What we decided to do because we were having some issues with people running into each other and getting each other killed because Oryx is shooting his bombs at this person and they run into this person and this person dies. We just had our runner and our DPS die at the very beginning of this phase because by the time the phase is over, we're able to res them and start the whole thing all over again. So if you need to just sacrifice yourself to make sure everything runs cleanly, that is totally fine, and you can totally do that. <laughs> Once his missile airstrike is done, you go back to doing that whole thing all over again. Oryx will go to a platform, he will slam his fist down, the runner will get on said platform, followed by the platformer. You go in a counterclockwise direction, jumping on your platforms, kill the ogre, kill the vessel, do damage to Oryx, detonate bombs, do damage to Oryx again, and there's another damage phase over. Now, there is something different that happens after you do get him down below 50% health. Instead of doing the air missile attacks, he will take you to the shadow realm. The, sh the shadow phase. We're calling this the shadow phase. Basically what will happen is he will spawn this big black orb in the middle, right near the very front of this whole encounter room. Do not touch it because you will die instantly. And what Oryx is going to start doing is slowly transporting every player in your fire team to this shadow realm to kill the shade of Oryx. I call it the shadow realm and it's the shadow phase even though it's called a shade. I don't care. But that's what he's going to do. Now when this is happening, the people on the outside are going to have Thrall spawning around them, Taken Thrall. It's very important that people kill the Taken Thrall because what they're going to try and do is go into that Shadow Realm with your teammates and kill them. Now within the Shadow Realm, you do not want to be dealing with Thrall because you're trying to kill that Shade as soon as possible. So all of your attention, all of your damage should be going on that Shade because if you do not kill him by the time everyone gets transferred transported into that realm, you're gonna wipe. It's a wipe. It's a wipe. So it's very important that you kill that shade before everyone gets in there because it will end up just having to start all over again and that is never fun. With the Shadow Realm phase over and the shade defeated, you will go back to doing the same thing all over again. I don't think I need to say the whole sequence again, but that's what it is. It's just a pattern of doing things. And once you get that pattern down, you get it in your head and you know what's going on, the fight is very, very easy easy. Just stay focused on your first time going through it. Make sure you're saying call out. So for our team, we would say platforms. So everyone would go to their platforms. Then we'd say middle, bombs, ogres. Like we just constantly keep having call outs. So people keep it fresh in their mind as to what they need to do, because it can be very easy to get unfocused and forget which part you're doing. Very, very easy, especially if you've been playing it for a long time. So just remain doing those call outs, platforms, circles, bombs, middle, damage. Just keep doing very clear and concise callouts so everyone knows what is happening and what they're supposed to be doing. After you have managed to detonate 16 bombs in Oryx's face, he's going to have a little surprise for you. What he's going to do is fall down. You're going to think it's over, but it is not. Make sure that everyone heads to the very, very front of the room, right where Oryx spawned at the very beginning of the fight. Head all the way to the front because he's going to pop up again and you're going to need to do damage to him. So it's very important that you are as close as you can possibly be. He's going to pop up again. You're all going to shoot him in the belly and that's when you have actually defeated 
Oryx. So that is it for the encounter, guys. Going through basic mechanics and just the kind of strategy that we did use. I know it's not the most illustrative, illustrationized guide in the world, but I do hope that it helps some of you who have yet to complete it, or just who, some people who wanted an explanation of how the whole thing goes down. So I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my mods. One of them has a channel, his name is The Real Cami. I will leave a link to his channel in the description because he makes really awesome PvP focused Destiny videos. So if you want to go check him out, that would be super cool. Go raid him, spam Land Squad, Watts Army, whatever you want to spam. But that would be really awesome if you would do that. Thank you to everyone who did the raid with me. I had an awesome time with you guys. The first run through was a lot less painful than I thought it would be. And to all of you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you did find it helpful. Got a bunch of super cool, awesome videos starting very soon. So I hope you enjoy all of them. And I will speak to you awesome, amazing people later. Bye.